Hey everyone, Lisa Salvatore here to talk to you about the beginning of December up until the full moon on December 7th. Now, December is what I am calling a kapow month. There is a lot going on, a lot. It is a big month. We are ending the year on a high note. Mixed bag of energy as always, but there is a lot of energy here. And it's always how we work with the energy, how we work with our own energy that can influence and dictate our own circumstances and events. Of course, there will always be things going on outside of us that are beyond our control. And this is why I like to do, well, this is why I want to do December in chunks because I just feel like there's so much going on this month and there's going to be a lot of twists and turns. Some might be extremely positive. And so because of the fact that there is so much energy, and when I looked at the astrology, I was just like, poof, you know, completely overwhelmed because there is a lot going on, okay? We are under a lot of mutable energy for most of the month, which means adaptable, flexible, fast, and moving. And that can also at times feel extremely scattered. So it can be really great and really productive for having us move forward, push past obstacles, and move toward our goals. We have to remember that there are still some forces right now that are preventing us from moving forward full steam ahead. And mutable energy can often feel scattered and overwhelming. So we want to watch out for that as well. So we start the month off today that I'm recording this video. It is December 1st, rabbit, rabbit. It is the first of the month. May you all experience peace and blessings and abundance. On December 3rd, Neptune, the planet of illusion and confusion and fantasy, and also a planet of romance and compassion and empathy and seeing the best in everything, Neptune is stationing direct on December 3rd, 7.15 p.m. Eastern time to be exact. Neptune has been retrograde since the end of June. Neptune goes retrograde every single year for the better part of five and a half to six months. When Neptune stations direct, it's actually quite positive because things become more clear. We can gain clarity, confusion clears. I always talk about Neptune, like you're trying to land an airplane in foggy weather and you're landing, you're landing, you're descending and you can see the ground just barely as the clouds part, but you just can't quite make that landing and you have to ascend again. That's a lot of how Neptune works. It's smoke and mirrors at its worst, it's fog. It's not being able to sort the wheat from the chaff and it can ultimately bring in an element of confusion. And so now that Neptune is stationing direct, a lot of that confusion can feel like it begins to clear up. Normally, that's the case while Neptune stations direct. However, I have to mention that Neptune will station in a square aspect to Mars, the planet of action and energy, and Mars is retrograde in Gemini, okay? So it's going to be stationing, Neptune will be stationing in a pretty close square to Mars. So again, this can make us feel more tired. This can make us feel more frustrated. This can still make us not feel as normally clear as if Neptune were stationing direct, let's just say conjunct Mars and Mars was not retrograde. The energy would be very different. Furthermore, Neptune is also going to station in an almost exact square to Venus. Venus is in Sagittarius. So as Neptune stations, it's going to square Venus. Now here's what's interesting. Venus is the planet of connection and relation and love, and it's what we like, and it's the way that we are with others. And Neptune is a higher octave of Venus. And so both these planets can give us the beauty, they can give us really beautiful things, poetic relationships and situations. Creativity can soar. But again, because it's a square, this may not bode well for relationship challenges or issues that could crop up or that especially have been ongoing. Those will not feel so clear as of yet. And in fact, the beginning of December for relationships, especially if you have strong mutable energy, which is Gemini, Pisces, Sagittarius, or Virgo, you may not feel great at the beginning of December. Just know that, especially when it comes to your relationships, especially if you're trying to make a decision about, you know, should I stay or should I go? Should I move forward with this? Should I stop this? Should I take this job? Should I not? Should I trust this person? Should I not? That is not going to feel clear at the beginning of the month. Normally when Neptune stations direct, we do gain some clarity, but for the better part of December, at least the first two to three weeks, there may still be some fogginess and confusion surrounding especially relationships. Positively speaking, we are much more invested in recognizing what is working and what has not been working and where have we been potentially deluding ourselves. We connect inside and we get real about it. And that is always very helpful. Again, that's going to feel stronger with the strong mutable energies, okay? Between 21 and 25 degrees, especially. So you're going to wanna check your chart. Again, quick tutorial linked below as always. Overall, this is a powerful month. December is a powerful month for connections and relationships of all kinds, contracts and negotiations, seeing things more clearly and gaining clarity as the month progresses. 
but don't expect the beginning to feel any less confusing, especially the first two weeks. And again, if you don't get my newsletter, I do put out a weekly forecast, which goes into much more detail day by day. I break it down for you, the astrology and the energies. So make sure that you subscribe to my newsletter at lisasalvatore.com. Then when we get to December 6th, Mercury, which is the planet of communication and information in our mind, Mercury will enter Capricorn. But before Mercury shifts into Capricorn, while he's still in Sagittarius, he's going to come up in an abrupt square to Jupiter in Pisces at the very last degrees of Pisces. And this can definitely bring in an element of where ha you might have been overdoing something, where you may have overstepped, that could become made clear to you. You could have some revelations around that. That's the beginning of the day, December 6th. Then as we get towards the middle of the day, that's when Mercury will officially enter the sign of Capricorn around 5.15 p.m. Eastern time. And this is significant because while Mercury is in Capricorn, Capricorn is a grounded Earth sign. Capricorn is all about results. Capricorn is all about information that makes sense and that is productive. And because Mercury is a planet of communication and information, when in Capricorn, our communications become more succinct, more business-like, more factual, and more productive. We're looking for useful information here. So with every piece of information that comes in, which let's not forget, Mars is retrograde, so there's lots of information coming in, stop, drop in, and ask yourself, is this true? Is this useful? Will this benefit myself? And will this benefit others? Really think about it. And if it isn't, you may want to move on from it. This is much more of a goal-orientated energy while Mercury is in Capricorn. Now, because Capricorn is the sign that is ruled by Sirius Saturn, the planet of lessons and sometimes limitations and restrictions, I also have to mention that it could become very evident where we can't move forward right now and having to work around that, finding another angle toward our goals. And of course, I have to mention the whole rewards and punishment aspect that Capricorn energy can often bring in. And there are many figures and positions of power that have strong Capricorn in their chart. Just saying. So we may hear a lot of uh, rising and falling as we move throughout this month and it can get messy on the world stage. It already is. Expect that to increase as we move throughout this month. And then we get to our full moon on December the 7th. And this full moon has a lot of energy, okay? And, you know, it goes both ways. There could be a lot of motivation present around this full moon. There can also be a lot of anger and irritation present around this full moon. Mars, currently retrograde in the sign of Gemini, and this full moon is in the sign of Gemini, means that this is a full moon that is almost exactly conjunct, aligned with Mars, the planet of energy. Double-edged sword Mars is, I always say that, right? It gives us the drive, the motivation, the impetus to act and to move forward, but it can also make us extremely angry, volatile, heated, make us want to fight. This is collective, more so if you have strong mutable energy again. Gemini, Virgo, Pisces, Sagittarius. This full moon takes place 11.09 p.m. Eastern time at 16 degrees and two minutes of Gemini. Now again, we're under a lot of mutable energy, mutable being changeable, durable, flexible, oftentimes scattered and overwhelming and anxiety producing. Gemini full moons can feel very nervous. They can really activate us for better or worse. The thing with Gemini is it is the planet that's ruled by Mercury and Mercury rules over many things, but also our nervous system, okay? Gemini rules the lungs. So you just wanna be careful about how much you're allowing your stress to affect you, your anxiety to affect you. Take moments to drop in and do a quick meditation, breathing exercises. Whatever gets you out of your head and into your heart, into your body is going to be extremely helpful the first two weeks of December, especially this first week as we're moving towards this full moon. Because again, a Gemini full moon, full moons by themselves can bring up our anxiety, heightened emotions, heightened awareness. Gemini can make us very jittery, very bzz, buzzy. I always use the buzz reference with Gemini. So a full moon in Gemini, is going to likely produce that buzz. Now again, that can be a very productive buzz for some of us, and then for others of us, we can just feel like we're gonna have a panic attack. Again, different for everybody, honor however it works for you, work with the energy and not against it. If your body is telling you, I need to lay down, I need to call in sick today from work, I can't do this today, then that's what you need to do, you need to honor that. Because I promise the first 10 days of December are going to feel extremely bzz, overwhelming anxiety producing. Sleepless nights might even be a part of that. So do what you can do to take care of yourself. Let me pull up the chart. All right, here we've got our Gemini full moon, December 7th, 11.09 p.m. Eastern time. Actually, I think that's 11.07, excuse me, exactly 11.07 Eastern time. All right, so here we see the sun down here at 16 degrees and one minute of Gemini. 
opposite the moon at 16 of Gemini. That's when we have a full moon when the sun and the moon are opposite each other. And here we have good old Mars retrograde in Gemini, literally almost exactly conjunct this full moon. Okay, so Mars is conjunct the moon opposite the sun. We're looking at volatile energy. We're looking at enhanced communication, potentially a lot of impatience. I'm going to stress here again, driving. You know what, actually, I'm gonna say for the whole entire month of December, and especially as we get into the second part, be extra cautious when you are driving extra cautious while you are traveling. Extra mindfulness will go a very, very long way. It always does, but especially this month and especially around this full moon, because again, heated. Potential for eruptions. Potential. Doesn't mean it will happen. You can also use the Mars energy constructively and funnel it into a project. Funnel it into something that you're passionate about. Again, Mars energy goes both ways. Now we're also dealing with a loose square to Neptune over here. Neptune's here at 22 degrees of Pisces and this full moon is 16. So the sun and the moon are loosely still squaring Neptune. So again, there could still be some confusion. And even though Neptune has just stationed direct, again, there's not going to be that humongous pop of clarity that we would normally think would occur with transits like this, but there would be a little bit of clarity, but you still just wanna watch that. Again, fact check everything, including yourself, to avoid conflict. Well, let me reframe, to avoid unnecessary conflict, because let's be real, conflict is a part of life and conflict is a necessary reality for all of us at different points in our lives. Mars is also loosely squaring Neptune. Again, with all this mutable energy, positively speaking, there can be a lot of options. And also, negatively speaking, it can feel like there are too many options. And so if you are a person that is prone to anxiety and depression, prone to addiction, prone to being scattered, this energy might really enhance that. So again, even more important for you to just be aware of it and do what you can to kind of quell that energy as it comes up. Have practices in play that ground you. That will be extremely helpful under these energies. Now, positively speaking, we've got Saturn over here at 20 degrees in a trine to this moon. So that's helpful. That helps us work through conflict constructively if we're willing to drop in and really assess what's going on and not react. Remember, respond and don't react. This is really an action-packed full moon. It's about what we do with this energy. It's about how we channel it. It's about how we funnel it. That can make all the difference. Now on the world stage, I have a feeling that this one can get really messy. Think about it. The moon also rules over the people. The moon rules over the masses, the collective at large. Also the emotional collective tone at large. And Mars retrograde conjunct this, almost exactly conjunct this full moon, is all about information coming out, news coming out that we may or may not like. So again, whatever does come out under these energies, just remember that it might not be final. There could still and more than likely will be a lot of shifting as we progress throughout the month of December. Now, as far as full moons go, I always say that they're a great time to set intentions for what we wish to release from our reality lovingly, especially when it comes in the form of destructive habits, patterns, and behaviors that we are holding, what we feel might be limiting us or holding us back. So if you do wanna do some form of a release ritual, that would be what you wanna focus on, the unproductive behaviors that we're carrying with us, the unproductive patterns, especially when it comes to family dynamics, especially when it comes to our communication styles, what we feel we may need to work on or what we can release, and then also what we feel like we need from others. This is a great time to do a release ritual. But remember, this is still going to feel a little confusing at times because we are still dealing with this square to Neptune. Now there's still an energy of unrest, especially when it comes to the collective energy at large. The sun over here at 16 Sagittarius is in a pretty close in conjunct or quincunx aspect to Uranus. Again, Uranus is about the collective, Uranus is about breaking free, and also about truth. So there's something here about getting to the truth, getting to the heart of the matter. We may have a little bit of adjusting to do in order to get to it. Because again, remember, the, the in conjunct aspect is all about making it work, and eventually it will. But it might just be a funky process to get it there. That is speaking to the collective destiny. Because remember, the North Node in Taurus is still traveling closely with Uranus the future. So a lot is unfolding right now. It's like we're laying down the tiles for the future. And this will prove to be a very pivotal month for all of this. And I think there's going to be a lot focused or centered, I should say, around the energy of this full moon. Even if we hear just little bits and pieces of information, it's all going to lead up to something much bigger as we move throughout this month. Remember, Pluto is still in a square to Eris, which is all about the people being heard, having their voice. We've got Black Moon Lilith up here at 26 of Cancer in almost an exact opposition to Pluto in Capricorn. The sign of Cancer is all about femininity and motherhood. Think about it. Our, our rights as women, women's rights. That's going to likely be another source of information that we may be hearing a lot about this month. 
not just around this full moon, but as we move throughout the month. Now, positively speaking, with all of this mutable energy and especially with Neptune having gestation direct, there is a sense of stronger connection, connection to the divine, connection to source, however you wanna look at it. Spirituality, creativity, we're much more psychically receptive and it's easier for us to receive information from what isn't being said from the intuitive realms. So meditation will serve you really well around this full moon, especially the first three weeks of December also. Meditation will serve us well always, but if you're looking for answers, if you're looking to drop in and feel and get answers, this is a great time to do it around this full moon. But you have to be open or else it won't work, right? Okay, now I also want to mention, and I'm going to come back and do another video for the second half of December, but I'm gonna mention this here. December 12th, well, first of all, Mercury is going to station retrograde for its fourth and final retrograde of the year. Mercury typically stations retrograde three times per year, sometimes four. And because this year Mercury will officially station retrograde on December 29th, it's four times for 2022. But Mercury is going to enter its shadow zone on December the 12th. And this is amongst all of this Neptunian energy, the Neptunian fog, Mars being retrograde, okay? Now remember, Mercury retrograde by itself typically messes with communication and technology and travel and our ability to process clearly. So amongst all this already existing confusion, Mercury is now going to enter this mix and really muddle it up. It's going to get messy. But remember, awareness is half the battle. So it's important not to push under this energy. It's important to go with the flow. Ride the current. Don't try to fight it. So again, December 12th, Mercury will enter its shadow. December 13th, we're gonna to start to feel it. You know, it's, it's going to be strong. And I'll go into more detail about the particulars of this retrograde in my next installment. But just in case I don't get that out to you before this, I need to say this. Again, remember I mentioned with the full moon, it's really important to pay very close attention to your movement at every step of the way. And that's extremely important as we move throughout the month, especially when we get to the 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th, because Mercury, in its shadow, it's not retrograde yet, but it's in its shadow getting ready to station, is going to oppose Mars retrograde. That's around the 13th, but it's not just that day, it's days before and days after. So listen, I'm just gonna stretch this out and tell you all of December, be extremely mindful of your movement, more mindful than normal. Remind yourself to take it easy, remind yourself to slow down, remind your children, remind your spouse, remind everybody in your life, you know, I love you, I just need you to be aware that the energy is wild, you can think I'm crazy, whatever, if they don't follow astrology, energy, intuition, whatever, you be the one to put that in their, in their head because they're going to, they'll remember. And the sun in Sagittarius at that point as we move throughout December is going to square Neptune, okay, more of this Neptune, so look, Gonna say it again and I will come back with more. Just be more mindful for all of December. Take care of yourself, be in gratitude. I have a post that I wrote about being mindful or remaining mindful throughout the holiday season. I've linked that below. There's also a lot of good here. I don't mean to make this sound, you know, doom and gloom and it is not like that. I just want you to be aware that December can feel messy, but it can also have some really magical moments. Because remember, Neptune is also beautiful. It can really give us the beauty, but we must always be mindful. It can also give us illusion. A lot of times we're the ones that are deluding ourselves. So it doesn't necessarily have to come from an outside source. And in fact, most of the time it doesn't. It's just what we're believing. It's what we're choosing to see. So definitely check that post out. I will have my gift guide up and running within the next week or so, hopefully. I did a really detailed one last year that I got a lot of positive feedback on. It's gonna have some really cool ideas in there pertaining to just spirituality and overall wellness. So again, sign up for my newsletter so that you receive all of these posts as they come out. Also, I've mentioned this before, I have all of these really nice, um, they're real stones, necklaces. Um, it's Katia Designs, linked that below. And you can use my special code, CARM10, again, it's linked below, to receive 10% off your purchase. These make great gifts. And again, that's Katia Designs, and that is linked below. This will also be in my gift guide. Again, take really good care of yourselves. And just remember, if you get overwhelmed, take a moment, take a breath, take a breather. Allow yourself to come back down. You will. Take care.